We are here today to be a part of the joining of two lives, Brinley Pomper and Bryce Carlton and God's holy covenant of marriage. We as their family and friends are here to support them as a community of love as they enter into this newfound relationship of marriage. It should be known that marriage is God's holy covenant and therefore should be carried out under his design and under his direction and therefore should not be entered into unadvisedly but rather reverently and discreetly before God. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gorgeous day. Uh, reflecting the amazing and beautiful and good God that you are in this world and in our lives. And we are here to celebrate uh, your plan for Brinley and Bryce and as they enter this new relationship of marriage. We're thankful to you um, for your plans and your ways, your hand on Brinley's life, your hand on Bryce's life that has brought them together and are just so thankful to be a part of this ceremony, um, this sacred ceremony of their two lives becoming one. So we thank you and we're honored and privileged to be a part of this and pray all of this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. So good at this point that I turned down Harry and Megan. Yes. <laughs> it was. I wasn't actually asked, but I thought if I was, with knowing you guys, wedding was on the radar and stuff, that I could just focus more attention and be Thank devote, you. really Thank devoted you. to this. So, weather. I'm not going to take credit for that at all. The setting. I'm just saying that's all beautiful, and I'm so thankful to be a part of that. God calls you into relationship with him and with one another. I ask you bring me and Bryce in the presence of God and these witnesses to declare your intent here today. Bryce, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together in holy matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor her, keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I do. Brinley Pomper. I've been practicing that name. I've been singing that name ever since you asked me to do this wedding. I've been so excited. And I love Brinley Pomper because my wife's an English teacher and I know the definition of the word onomatopoeia. Do you know what that, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Where the word sounds like the sound. The word defines itself as you say it. So like buzz, yeah. you get that. And Brinley Pomper, like just say Brinley Pomper. <laughs> Brinley Pomper defines itself and to be a part of Brinley Pomper's day and wedding is just an exciting thing for me. So again, Thanks. so good to be a part of this. Brinley, will you have this man to be your husband, to live together in holy matrimony? Will you love him, comfort him, honor him, keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I do. Doxology? Yes. <laughs> Got it? <laughs> God from whom all blessings flow, praise Him all creatures here below, praise Him above ye heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Being in love is a good thing, but it's not the best thing. There are many things below it, but there are also many things above it. You cannot make it the basis of an entire life. It is a noble feeling, but it is still just a feeling. Now, no feeling can be relied on to last in its full intensity, or even to last at all. Knowledge can last, principles can last, 
habits can last, but, but last, but feelings come and go. In fact, whenever people say the state called being in love usually does not last. If the old fairy tale ending, they lived happily ever after, is taken to mean that they felt for the next 50 years exactly as they felt the day they were married, then this is something that probably never was nor ever would be true and would be highly undesirable if it were. Who could bear to live in that excitement for even five years? What would become of your work, your appetite, your sleep, your friendships? But of course, ceasing to be in love need not mean ceasing to love. Love in this second sense, distinct from being in love, is not merely a feeling. It is a deep unity maintained by the will and deliberately strengthened by habit, reinforced by the grace which both parties ask and receive from God. They can have this love for each other, even at those moments when they do not like each other, as you can love yourself even when you do not love yourself. They can retain this love even when each would easily, if they allowed themselves to be in love with someone else. Being in love first moved them to promise fidelity. This quieter love enables them to keep the promise. It is not this love that the end of marriage is one. Being in love is the explosion that started. Awesome reading that uh, that was from C.S. Lewis in Mere Christianity. And I have read that book but was not familiar with that passage. But love the thoughtfulness that it reflects about love and what love is about marriage and how God fits into the whole picture is just a beautiful and thoughtful thing, I think, as marriage is entered into. It reminded me of a passage out of 1 John that is about love and about God and about our relationships. It reads like this. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is bought, uh, brought to full expression in us. And I think that's such a beautiful way to encapsulate this moment where we are really seeing the incredible, invisible love of God made visible in your two lives as you commit them together. The foundation of marriage comes from Genesis and I think it's this foundation of love and God and that relationship that sets us up for the ultimate success and to live out his plan. That first really states that this wedding day, this plan of your two lives coming together is more his idea than yours. It's something you've discovered but he's always had in his mind since the beginning and he has plans for from here on out. And that the way to discover that is to take on the new role that he defines in marriage where we live laying our life down for the other to be lifted up. That is the Adam and Eve deal, the helpmate, the suitable for the other to find the life that God has for them is in this sacrificial love that God demonstrated for us that we live that out in our lives. And the third thing is just that commitment to no plan B. If this is God's plan, whether we feel it, like the reading said, or whether it's just the commitment that we know that we've made in our hearts and with our family and with our friends, it's the road we row, the course we stick to, and where we really find the happily ever after that God has created us for. So as your friends and family, um, as those standing up, a part of this marriage that goes on from here, uh, we stay committed to these things and join you in this new relationship. I did hurry a little bit along through that <laughs> since we're both all about to die <laughs> and here with the heat. So, <laughs> continuing in a lovely way. Bryce, I now ask you to take Brinley's hands in yours and while looking into her eyes, pledge your love and affection before God and these people today. Repeating after me. I, Bryce, take you, Brinley, 
Hi, Bryce. Take you, Brinley. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy covenant. According to God's holy covenant. I give you my life. I give you my life. Brinley, repeat after me. I Brinley take you, Bryce. I Brinley take you, Bryce. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy covenant. According to God's holy covenant. I give you my life. I give you my life. What symbol of your love and affection do you bring to this wedding today? These, These rings. rings. Bryce, repeat after me. I, Bryce, give you this ring. I, Bryce, give you this ring. In symbol and in pledge. In symbol and in pledge. Of our abiding faith. Of our abiding faith. And unending love. And unending love. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brinley. I, Brinley, give you this ring. I, Brinley, give you this ring. In symbol and in pledge. In symbol and in pledge. Of our abiding faith. Of our abiding faith. And unending love. And unending love. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, believing in you and your sacred covenant of marriage, we celebrate the joining of Brinley and Bryce together here today. We thank you for these vows and these commitments through the exchange of their rings that uh, just knit their lives together according to your will as they search for the life that you have created for them. We're thankful and we celebrate this in your name. Amen. Unity sand is a symbol of what the joining of two lives are like, and I think that was pretty fitting. <laughs> it kind of goes like that sometimes. That's why we stay committed. <laughs> Excellent. It now gives me great pleasure uh, with the work that God has done here in this day and through the uh, coming together of our lives as their family and friends to introduce to you for the first time Mr. and Mrs. Bryce Carlton. You may now kiss your bride.